Hi everyone, thanks for visiting my channel. If you're new here, welcome, I'm Carol and I'm so glad that you stopped by. Please consider subscribing, like and share my videos and follow me on social media. I will leave all the links in the description box below. So today we have another delicious canning video for you. We are gonna be canning up black forest preserves and I think that this is gonna be so perfect for the holidays, great for gift giving. Now if you know anything about black forest cake, it's chocolate and cherries and that is exactly what we're gonna be canning up in these preserves. Now typically chocolate is not approved for canning, typically it's dairy, but this is an approved recipe and we're gonna be using cocoa powder as our chocolate part. Um, so it's totally safe. It does come from the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving. I believe it might be in one of the other ball books as well, but it's definitely in this one on page 76. It's just very basic ingredients, but we are gonna make a slight change. You need sugar, of course. We need some unsweetened cocoa powder and they want it to be sifted. We need three cups of firmly packed, coarsely chopped, pitted sweet black cherries. So I get this question a lot, can I use frozen fruit? And in this case, I did. The answer to that is yes, you can. You just wanna make sure it's at least thawed enough to chop it and you want to include whatever um, juice comes from it. So I just took my cherries out of the freezer, let them thaw a little bit, and then I used my food processor to, um, to gently chop them up. It says coarsely chopped, so I just pulsed it a few times um, to get them chopped, and you want three cups measured, and I measured that after chopping them. We need a half a cup of lemon juice. Make sure that you use bottled lemon juice here. Now this is where I made my change. The recipe calls for two pouches of ball liquid pectin or Bernard Bernardin liquid pectin. I didn't have any liquid pectin and I couldn't find any, so I'm gonna be using powdered, which is fine. We can make the conversion for every pouch of liquid pectin, you need two tablespoons of powdered pectin. And this is a question I get frequently, how do I convert liquid pectin to powder and vice versa? So the best answer that I could come up with, and I did a, quite a bit of research, for every pouch of liquid, you need two tablespoons of powdered. So this recipe calls for two pouches, so we need four tablespoons of powdered pectin. So we're gonna be using that. And then the last ingredient is amaretto liqueur. Now I know some of you do not like using liqueurs, but they add delicious flavor that you just can't get any other way. So we're gonna be using some Di Sirono. It is amaretto or almond flavored liqueur. It is totally delicious, delicious and it pairs beautifully with um, cherries. But if you do not want to use the liqueur, that's totally fine, you can use almond extract instead. And they say to use a half a teaspoon of almond extract. So that's your conversion. If you wanna use almond extract instead of the liqueur, you can do that. Or you can leave it out totally. It's entirely up to you, but it's gonna add a lot of delicious flavor here, make it really festive and perfect for the holidays. Now, Ball does note they usually give you ideas on ways to use it other than preserves, hello, slathering it on toast or a piece of bread. It says that it, the fabulous flavor of these preserves make it a tasty accompaniment to cheese, so perfect for your holiday cheese board or charcuterie board, right? Uh, they also recommend tucking it into ice cream balls. You could warm it and then just drizzle it across the top. Also great between cake layers, of course, think black forest cake or cookie sandwiches. So lots of great ways to use it and I think it's gonna be fantastic for our holiday cheese boards. That's how I'm gonna be using it and I'm going to be gifting it. The other thing that I need to mention, because we are switching from liquid pectin to powdered pectin, our instructions are a little bit different than what's written in the book. So if you have this book and you're following along with the book, you need to follow the instructions they have in the book if you're using liquid pectin. We are not using liquid pectin, we are using powdered, which means we are going to stir together our cherries, our chocolate, our lemon juice, and our pectin, and we're gonna bring that to a full boil 
that cannot be stirred down, then we're going to add our sugar. If you are using liquid pectin, you do things in a different order. So make sure to make note of that and understand that I'm changing this recipe. I've converted it to using or powdered pectin instead of the liquid. So make sure that you know which type of pectin you're using and make sure you follow the instructions that's appropriate for either liquid or powder. I'm gonna be using instructions for powdered pectin. So I'm gonna bring you in close and we're gonna get started. Okay guys, here we go. I have three cups of my coarsely chopped, firmly packed sweet, dark sweet cherries. That's what the recipe calls for is dark sweet cherries. To that, we are going to add a third of a cup of unsweetened cocoa powder. We're gonna add a half a cup of lemon juice, bottled lemon juice. And we're going to add our four tablespoons of powdered pectin. I'm gonna turn that on to a medium high heat. Give everything a really good stir. When making jams, jellies, preserves, anything of that nature, you wanna make sure you use a pot that is big enough for it to have some room to groove. It will expand as it's cooking. So it's important that you have a nice pot that's big enough to accommodate it. You also wanna make sure you have your canner and your jars ready um, before you get started. So I have three quarts of simmering water in my steam canner ready. I have washed my jars and I'm keeping them hot in a sink full of hot water. I've washed my lids and set them aside. So all of that is ready to go. All right, we just need to bring this up to a boil, a full boil that cannot be stirred down. Okay, we are at a nice full boil here. I do wanna note that at this point, you wanna make sure your heat is up as high as it will go. Now we want to add six and a half cups of sugar all at once. Stir that in. And we wanna bring this back up to a full boil and we wanna let it boil hard for one minute. Okay, we are at a full boil that cannot be stirred down, so we wanna time one minute. Okay, we've cooked for one minute. I'm gonna turn my heat off. I'm going to add my four tablespoons of my amaretto. Give that a stir, and then we are all set for canning. Okay guys, here we go with canning. I don't think I have to tell you how delicious my kitchen smells right now. So we are canning in the eight ounce jelly jars. We are going to ladle in our preserves to a quarter of an inch headspace. Once you get to your quarter of an inch headspace, you're going to take a debubbling tool, plastic butter knife, uh, or chopstick and release your air bubbles. Just poke around your jar. Take a paper towel dipped in white vinegar to clean your rims. Um, I did want to mention modern canning guidelines state that we don't need to pre-sterilize our jars or lids if you're canning for 10 minutes or more and we are going to be canning for 10 minutes. So I just washed everything, set it aside, kept my jars hot in hot water and washed my lids, set them aside. So now you uh, place your lids and then we're going to add our bands to fingertip tight. and in the canner they go. Okay guys, I got seven jars, which is what the recipe said we would get, so that was perfect. So now we're going to put our lid on our canner. If you are water bath canning, you want to make sure that the water covers your jars by at least an inch once they are in there. We wanna crank our heat up to high. If you're water bath canning, you wanna bring your water up to a full rolling boil before you start your processing time. For steam canning, you want to look at your dial gauge, and when you get into your green zone, you can start your processing time at that point. You also want to adjust your heat once you get there to just maintain being in your green zone or um, a full rolling boil. You don't want it boiling too vigorously throughout the process. So we're gonna process for 10 minutes. Once our 10 minutes are up, you can turn your heat off, remove your lid, let your jar sit for a few minutes, and then we can take them out. Okay guys, we are all done. I processed six jars and left one out so that we could see it, how delicious it is. It's not exactly beautiful to look at. Um, 
but cherry and chocolate decadence. You cannot ask for anything better. It tastes absolutely divine. It is just amazing. This still has a way to go to be completely cool, but it's really starting to thicken up nicely. It's got nice chunks of cherries in there and the chocolate and the amaretto in the background is just heavenly. So I hope you'll give it a try. Lots of fabulous ways to use it. Like I said, use it over ice cream. Wonderful on a charcuterie board. Fantastic with cheeses and crackers. Um, put it between cake layers, between cookie layers. I can see it being stirred into oatmeal for your breakfast, uh, stirred into cheesecake batter or brownie batter. Lots of fantastic ways to use it. And who doesn't love the decadence of cherry and chocolate together, especially for the holidays. So I hope you'll give it a try. Thanks for coming along with me today, guys. If you have any comments or questions, leave them for me in the comment section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.